What do the high beams look like? Welcome to Toyota Time with TV the Tool Man and Sean. Today we have returning special guest Ton. Not his kissing cousin Con, but it's Ton. <laughs> and what we're going to do for Ton today is we're going to install these very cool retrofit projection headlights from BX Built. They're pretty badass. Now, why would you buy these retrofit projection headlights? Well, number one, you're gonna get better light output, so you're gonna be able to see better where you're going, whether it's on the road or on the trail. Number two, these lights give you a lot of extra style points. You're basically gonna look pretty badass with these lights on your rig. So if you're looking for more sick mods and style points for your rig, these BX Built headlights are a good way to go. With the BX Built headlights, you can customize them the way you want. These lights are the second generation GX470 headlights. They're the newest edition. They feature the B3 Pro LED laser projectors and they feature the generation two RGB control system. So these are the newest and best version that you can get for the GX470 model. So we're gonna show you how to pull out the old headlights and then be able to get these new cool BX built headlights installed. And then we're going to show you some of the wiring that is necessary to be able to use the controller to operate all the cool functions that these headlights can do. If you decided you want to order a set of these BX built headlights for your rig, there's going to be a promo code in the video description that you can use to get a discount on a cool set of these BX built headlights. With all that said, we're going to get out to the rig and we're going to get started with this job. Right now, he still has the stock headlights in. He doesn't have the stock bulbs in the headlights. He decided to buy some aftermarket ones on Amazon that are white instead of yellow, but the strength of them isn't any better than stock. So you can see the brightness, and then you got the high beams. The first things we have to do is remove a couple engine covers, and I'll show you the ones we need to remove. On the passenger side, you have this one you have to remove because it goes over this one and we have to get this one off also. They're held on with a multitude of clips and then on the back side of here, on the firewall, you'll see a couple studs and those studs will have like a little plastic nut on them. Ton either lost all these fasteners or the clips broke so he doesn't really keep them in the engine compartment anymore. They're just here to keep the engine looking a little bit cleaner and sleeker I guess. You really don't need them per se. So you get this one out of your way. This is the kind of clip I'm talking about. It's got a little center plunger. You get underneath it with a skinny tool like a small flat blade screwdriver. You pry it up, you pop it up, and then you could pull the whole clip out. So this is the type of clip I'm talking about that holds those engine covers onto the body. And then you want to do the same thing to get this radiator support seal out of your way. There's a total of 11 clips that hold this radiator seal to the body. So you get all the clips out and then you can lift this thing off. And you can see all the clip holes. You have three here, you have a bunch on the top. So three on the bottom and eight on the top. The first thing the instructions say to do is disconnect the fender liner from the bumper. The lower front part of the fender liner is attached to the bumper with three 10 millimeter screws. The first one is right here. And you can see what the screw looks like. It goes into a plastic plug. And then the other two are underneath. There's one here close to the tire. And then there's another one here more towards the front. And we have to do the same with the passenger side. 
there is a difference in size of these screws. The one that was inside the fender well is a shorter one. The two underneath are a little bit longer, so just remember that. The instructions say to next remove the front bumper lower cover, and I can't figure out what they're talking about. I think it's missing on Ton's rig. This is how he bought it, and it says the lower cover is held on with five bolts and two clips, and I don't see anything that has five bolts and two clips. We don't seem to have that lower cover. I guess it goes somewhere in here and it's just not here. They could be maybe talking about this thing. This thing actually connects up to the stock skid plates, but I don't know. This doesn't really attach to the bumper, so I don't think that's it. So anyways, we're gonna move on to the next step. Now we're gonna remove the bumper assembly. Before we start removing all the fasteners, we're gonna disconnect the fog lights first. We're first gonna disconnect the electrical plug to the fog light on the driver's side. It's as easy as that. We're gonna do the same on the passenger side. Before we try to remove this front bumper cover, the instructions say to put some protective tape right on the edge of the fender. I'm guessing because you can end up scratching it up a little bit. So we clean this up with a little bit of simple green and a paper towel just to get the dirt off. And we're gonna put some painter's tape right here and right here. Okay, we're gonna do the same on the passenger side. So now we have to remove a series of clips and bolts to get this bumper cover off. Here's an example of these push type of clips. You get underneath it, you pry it up, and then you pull it out, and you can see what they look like. And I assume this is the same style of clip that all those engine covers use. I'll show you another one. Get underneath it, pry up gently, pull it out. We got one more. All three clips are out. Now we gotta work on getting some screws and bolts out. There's two screws in the fender well. So this is the passenger side and you can see where we did our tape. And then if you look in here, there's a screw right here. And we're gonna remove one of these in each fender well. Now we're gonna go underneath the rig and get some more fasteners out. I'll show you those. We're still on the passenger side. Here's one right here, and you can see it actually broke through. It's not even holding it, but I'm gonna take it out so I can show you what the fastener looks like. 10 millimeter also, they're all 10 millimeter. It's a 10 millimeter bolt with a built-in washer so it can capture the plastic of the bumper. Now we're gonna move to the center of the vehicle and there's other fasteners you have to remove. But what we found when we looked underneath here, Ton is missing a lot of these little 10 millimeter bolts. He's missing most of them. So there should be one here going further towards the driver's side. There should be another one here and then going all the way on the passenger side. There should be one here also and that one's missing too. So he's missing three bolts on the underside that hold this bumper cover to the body. And so now we're gonna go for the other one inside the fender well on the driver's side. And that should be the last one, I think. The instructions next say to disengage the six claws and remove the bumper cover. Now I understand why they put the protective tape because there's these claw connections in this area. I don't know if you need a trim removal tool. They say use a screwdriver. I don't know if I'd use a screwdriver. You could just pull with your hands and disengage it and you can see the holes where the claws capture it. So we got that one disconnected, but now getting this one disconnected might be tricky. Let's see. This connection right here is pretty stubborn. I'm gonna try to pry it out with this one and maybe get this one in there to pry. There we go. That's separated. There we go. Okay, we got that one started. Now we're gonna go to the other side. First, we're just gonna try with our hand. Maybe not. Pry a little bit here. There we go. Okay, those are separated. I'm gonna try the same thing on this side. Pry out a little bit, get in there. There we go. Looks like we're getting somewhere. We got both sides disconnected. Now we gotta figure out the rest of the maneuver to get this thing off. We noticed the fender liner is hooked right here. So we have to get that free. 
Okay, that's completely free. Do the same on the other side. Is there anything else stopping us from pulling this off? Let's see. Oh, there it is. It's finally off. If you had an extra set of hands, it would be easier because one person could be on the passenger side, the other person could be on the driver's side, and you could work it off together. But you saw I was able to do it on my own. So we've got the bumper cover off. The next thing we're gonna remove is the front bumper stay sub-assembly. It's held on with a 10 millimeter bolt and two 10 millimeter nuts. The 10 millimeter bolt is right here on the driver's side. And then the two nuts are on the side. Should be able just to pull this sucker off. We're gonna do the same on the passenger side. The next thing we're gonna remove is these number two front side panel protectors. They're held on with a couple clips. You can access the clips from the engine compartment. You just gotta hook it, free it, and then you can see the two clips. You might find that these break on you because they're pretty brittle, but I was able to get this one off without breaking it. And you can see it exposes one of the bolts you have to remove to where you can get the headlight assembly out. So that's why you gotta remove it. We're gonna do the same on the driver's side. Now we're ready to remove the headlight assembly. It's held on with two 10 millimeter screws and one 10 millimeter bolt. I think these two upper ones are screws. Yep, screw. Yeah, the two upper ones are screws. And then on the side, there's a bolt. It's right here. Now supposedly you could just pull this thing out, you can get it out far enough, then you could disconnect the connectors. I just pulled up a little bit and got these plastic arms off of the plastic insert. There is a clip right here that you have to get it out of, but it doesn't say to remove these clips just yet, so it's supposed to pop out of there. So let me see if I can get that thing unpopped. That thing's fighting me quite a bit. And it popped out of that clip. And then now I have better access to these plugs. I'll get this one disconnected, and then I'll get this other one disconnected. And then there's a third one right here. The driver one is out, and we're gonna do the same with the uh, passenger side. We're not gonna bother showing it. You already know how to do it. With these BX built lights, we have to transfer over some parts. So this plug, this plug, this plug, and then we have to take this electrical connector out. We gotta transfer the three plugs and the connector over to the BX built lights because they don't come with it. So these should just be a twist and pull out. <laughs> and that one's out. <laughs> twist that one, pull out. I usually don't like pulling out, but I'll pull out this time. Twist to the left. Okay. And then now we gotta get this clip off. I think you just lift up on this little connector here and pull up. Just like so. And this little chingadera is gonna be transferred over. Now we need to install this harness with all the plugs onto the BX build headlights. We have this clip that needs to slide over the post. There we go. And then with these plugs, there's two notches that are a little bit bigger than the other two notches. And that will correspond with these tabs. Two will be bigger, two will be smaller. Then it's just a twist where you put it in and then twist it to the right and it locks in. Same with this one. There's gonna be a larger tab and smaller tabs. You gotta line them up and then twist it. And then finally, this last one, there's two bigger tabs and two smaller tabs. You gotta line them up and then twist it in place. All right, that's all the accessory plugs that we needed to transfer over. We're gonna do the same with the other side. All right, we have the accessory plugs installed on the Beakspill headlights. Now we're gonna get the headlights installed on the rig. Oh, get, get that clipped in, huh? There we oh, go. There you go. We slid the headlight in place and we slid these plastic brackets 
over these plastic plugs that the screws go into. Now we have to snap it into the final connection underneath the headlight. Right there. Now we gotta get the two screws installed at these two mounting points. No torque value for these. We're just gonna get them nice and snug. The third fastener that holds the headlight assembly to the body is this one that comes in from the side. It's a 10 millimeter, just cinch it up snug and call it good. All right, that's the passenger side done. We're gonna do the same with the driver's side. Now that we have the headlight installed on the rig, we're gonna make the electrical connections. The low beam connection on the BX Build headlight matches up with the green plug on the vehicle wiring harness side. And then with this plug, you can connect it either way. So you have to know which is positive and which is negative. On the BX Built female plug, the red wire is the positive, the black wire is the negative. And then on the engine harness side, the red and black wire is the positive, the black and white wire is the negative. So we'll make the connection. The high beam one can only go on one way because it only has one tab here for the locking mechanism. And we'll make that connection. There's a third plug that's for the marker light and it's easiest to access it from underneath the headlight. And it plugs in right here. There we go. We're gonna get these stays back connected. You gotta get it slid over the studs first. There we go. And then we just gotta get our nuts and bolt in. Again, we're gonna use the German spec of good and tight because this is not a very critical component. All you gotta do is make sure they're snug enough to where they don't fall off. Call it a day. Good and tight. And that's good and tight. We're gonna do the same on the other side. Next, we'll pop these covers back in. And then we're gonna pop the other one in. All right, we're ready to get this sucker back on. Ton went ahead and put a little bit of extra painter's tape on the fender, so in case I miss with the install, I don't scratch up the paint. He likes the mall crawl, and looks are very important, so you can't show up to a mall crawling meetup with a scratched up rig, that is against the rules. Okay, here we go, here we go. Where am I at? It looks like I'm low, huh? Okay, we gotta move over to the other side. You see this tab right here? This has to go over the top and then into this hole right there, just like that. And then I should be able to give a little, like I'm um, doing the bump, doing some disco. I could just pop that in. Just look at that. Little hip bump, little hip bump. Little hip bump. Look at that. Pop that in, pop this little sucker in. That's it. We just gotta get our clips in on the front and uh, I think one bolt he had left underneath and then we've got this sucker back on. So with these clips, you want the plunger out, you want to slide it into the hole and then you push the plunger in place and that locks it in. It basically expands out the sides of the clip and it locks it in. It's kind of like if you ever installed something in sheetrock and you turn a screw into a expanding plastic anchor and then that's how they work. But this just works with the plug pushing in and flaring the ends out. Okay, all the clips are in. Now we're gonna get the one bolt underneath installed and then we're gonna get the two screws in from the wheel wells. I'll go for the wheel well ones first. This fender liner is still popped out but because it's pretty thin and malleable plastic, I could bend it in and then snap that in place. Gotta get this screw in place here. And if you haven't figured it out yet, no torque spec for this either. Just good and tight with a little shorty ratchet. And that's good and tight. And we're gonna get that same screw in on the driver's side and get that fender clip in place. Now we're gonna reattach the front part of the fender liner to the bumper cover. There's 
two longer screws on the bottom and then there's one in the fender well that's shorter so let's see if i can line this up where's the hole at find the hole tim did i find it did i find it i think i found the hole Again, these are going into a plastic plug, so don't go crazy over tightening them. You'll strip it. Okay, and then we got to get the one in the fender. The shorty screw goes here. This one feels like it's stripped out, so I'm not going to tighten it anymore. And you might find the same thing, so just stop and don't strip it out all the way as long as it's halfway snug hopefully it's not going to fall out on you so now we're going to do the same thing on the other side we didn't show it but i got that one bolt with the big washer attached for the underside of this bumper cover you're probably going to have a lot more than that so you're going to probably have to get like four or five of them started and then just get those all cinched up into that speck of good and tight and then you've got this bumper cover and the fender liners all reconnected properly. For this install, Tom decided to do a custom switch panel or S-Pod, and we have the main switching block with different size fuse connections, five, 10, 20, and 30 amp connections. And then we have the main 60 amp breaker that's gonna connect to the battery and then connect to this main switching pod. The controller for the RGB halos is attached right here to this fuse block. We just used some Velcro to attach it here. And then we have the red wire connected up to the positive side of this five amp circuit. And then we have the black wire connected up to the negative side for the five amp circuit. And then we decided to run the wiring that goes to the driver's side going around the battery to make the connections right here and i'll make them right now it doesn't matter which one connects to which it makes no difference you just have to note that the locking mechanism for the connection has to match up with the little push tab just like that the wiring from the control box that goes over to the passenger side we have the wire routed where it goes right along the top of the radiator here and then it makes a connection right here. To mount this switch block and the 60 amp fuse, we made a custom bracket. Personal choice, you can mount it however you feel necessary, but we like this spot right here in between the main fuse panel and the hydraulic brake booster. And we used an existing hole in the body right here to mount it on the driver's side. And then down below, we have it mounted through a M6 by 1.0 pitch threaded hole on the top of the driver's side fender. The power runs from the positive post on the battery and it runs over to the fuse block right here. And then the fuse block attaches to the switching block right here. And then we have the negative connection to the switching block connected up to the negative terminal on the battery right here. So that's the way we have it wired. Now we have to run the harness for this switching block through the firewall to where we could connect it to the main switching panel that will end up controlling the headlights and other things that Ton chooses to use with that switching panel. The path we chose to run the wires for the switching panel is through this hole that's not being used by anything. There was a rubber grommet there that we removed and we're going to run the wires through there. This is what the grommet looks like right here. We drilled it out to where we can run this connector through and then these other two wires through. So what I did is I took a metal awl and I pushed it through and all there is is some insulation and then a rubber piece. And I figured out where that was going through. And then underneath the dash, I made an X to where I could push these wires through. And now that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna push these wires right through the firewall. This connector right here with the red and white wire that's plugged into this switch panel right here, these are the wires that are giving power to the switching panel that Ton mounted inside the cab. Ton chose to mount the switching panel right here. All we did is pop off this wood grain trim piece 
and that exposed an area where we could bolt this to the dashboard. And then the red wire comes up from underneath the dash through that same hole we made in the firewall and it goes to a tap of fuse that we added. So the red wire is crimped to the tap of fuse and we're using the cigarette lighter spot for this connection. So you have two fuses, one 10 amp fuse for the cigarette lighter and then a second 10 amp fuse that's powering the switch panel. And then the ground wire is connected right to the body here, right to the left of the brake pedal on a stud. This plug connection right next to the plug connection that gives the switch panel in the cab power, this is the controller connection. So this is the first wire that we push through the firewall and that connects up to the switch panel so the switch panel can communicate with this fuse panel to turn on the individual circuits. And that's this wire right here that plugs into the switch panel. In order to be able to use the special functions of the headlights, you have to download a phone app that works for Apple or Android, and you can just take your phone and scan this with your camera or a QR scanner, and then it will bring you to a link for you to be able to download the app. So here's what the app looks like on Ton's iPhone. And so you're able to adjust the brightness of the halos. There's preset colors and whatever, classic colors. Once you're connected via Bluetooth, you can select and it changes the color as you press each of these buttons. You can also select from this little dial here to select different range of colors that they offer that are not preset. You can also turn it off with this little switch. It also has different preset styles where the lights will just autoplay or they'll just move one way or the other and it gives you different color options as well that are pretty much preset you got the basic and all of these other water flow tail and so on it's actually pretty cool to see when it's dark enough and those halos are on to see the different function it offers you can also play music and the lights kind of blink to the rhythm of the music these are preset music you can also do the mic where you turn it on and then I can play music off of say Spotify or any other app and it also follows the rhythm of the music. Now if you're not like Ton and you have all the clips for these two pieces you would drop this piece in first like so you put all your clips in you got three clips here you got eight of them up here and then you would slide this in place slide it over those studs in the back fit it over here Put a couple more clips in here, another clip in the corner there, and then you got the engine covers back in place that you needed to remove for the headlight replacement. All right, we are all done with this job. As you saw, it's not that complicated. We did decide to add one extra feature, and that was adding the fuse block in the engine compartment mounted on a custom bracket along with a 60 amp fuse, and then we put a switching panel inside the rig. Going that route is a pretty nice way to go, especially if you plan on adding more accessory lighting and other things you'd like to power up with that panel. It's nice to have all the switches in one module rather than have separate switches on your dash that you have to figure out where to put them. So we believe that is a really nice way to go. These BX Built headlights have a very practical application and then they have a sort of show-off side of them too. You can build these headlights however you want. You can just get the projectors and shroud and do the work yourself, order the parts of BX Built and you can assemble it yourself. You can add the RGB controller and the fancy lighting function if you want, or you don't add that in. They're totally customizable to how you want to build them. So the practical application for these BX Bill headlights is your lighting is gonna be very much improved whether you're going down the roadway or whether you're on the trail. And then the sort of impractical side of it is all the fancy colored lights and blinking to music and all the other things that you can do with these lights. Those are all just style points. And I have to say they're pretty damn cool. And so if you want those extra sick mod style points, these big spill headlights are an excellent way to go. You are going to be the coolest kid on the block with them. 
or on the trail or at the mall showing off for your buddies. Ton, Sean, and myself are pretty impressed with the build of the BX Build headlights. They look to be very well built. They function well. So we believe BX Build is a good way to go for you if you are looking for an improvement in the headlight department. With all that said, we thank you for watching Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean and special guest Ton. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, do that below. Take care. Bye-bye. Sick mods and sick projector headlights from BX Build. Peace out. Happy wrenching. Bye-bye.